Hello, hello to you, my fellow printed dweebs. You're very welcome to another episode of Community News from 3D Jake. All the news from the community and what's going on with us too. I'm joining you from the 3D Jake office in the center of Graz in southern Austria, a country that, despite popular belief, does not have special airport help desks for confused tourists wondering why they're not in Australia. However, we ourselves have had experiences with people confused by that. Here's what's going on in 3D printing right now. All right, first up is what is in the shop, and we are getting the P2S. Yes, the P2S combo will be in stock in a couple of weeks, and the P2S alone in December. So there are considerable differences between the P1S and P2S, specifically the new touchscreen, uh, a servo extruder motor with more torque, which also feeds back and detects clogs too, uh, an eddy current sensor to calibrate flow dynamics, a new cooling system which has an auxiliary fan that draws air from the outside instead of from inside the chamber. Uh, there's an AI spaghetti detection and air printing detection. There is a better camera and better lighting for the chamber. Uh, there is a quick swap hotend and the combo comes with the AMS2 Pro. Uh, these are some pretty nifty features and at that price it's pretty hard to resist. Elsewhere in the shop, we have new Panchroma colors and new Sunlu, PETG, and fancy colors coming in the new year. Uh, but I am most interested in uh, the new LDO collaboration, specifically the Micron Plus R1 and the Delta Fire. Both mini printers, and I know a lot of you are not so much into mini printers. Uh, I'm sorry, I love mini printers, they're awesome. So firstly, the Micron Plus, uh, this is based on the printers for Ant Micron, which is a 180 by 180 printer. It's not super small. Remember the Voron Zero was 120 by 120, pretty tiny. Uh, the Micron has a Nighthawk USB toolboard flying gantry, which is quite interesting because you never see flying gantries on tiny printers. Um, it also uses the Dragon Burner as the print head, but you could also go for the Delta Flyer by Rolahan. Uh, which is a, a delta, of course, uh, a mini delta, which has a build area of 115 by 115. Uh, yeah, really tiny. Uh, to keep things lightweight, though, it does use a Bowden extruder, which is interesting. I haven't seen a Bowden extruder on a printer in a long time. Um, but this is enclosed, so you can print ABS pretty easily, and other filaments, of course, are compatible. If you're interested in a fun build uh, for a tiny printer, and let's be honest, if you have the time for this, uh, these are definitely worth considering. In other shop news, Elegoo have started their Black Friday sales already, which means we have a ton of discounts on their products in the shop. So if you're looking for a one kilogram spool of filament for just over 10 euro, yeah, time to stock up. Uh, also major discounts on the Mars 5 and 5 Ultra and their resin, if you're interested. And just yesterday, we started the Bamboo Lab Black Friday sale. So we have a lot of discounts on their printers and devices. So P1S combo is almost 50% off. Same goes for the A1 Mini. And there are additional discounts on things like the P1S alone, the A1, A1 combo, and the AMS and AMS Lite. Looks really cool. In Slicer news, there are two stories actually. So firstly, new Orca Slicer came out with some new bug fixes and newer printer profiles for the SV08 Max. SV01 uh, and Cobra 2 Neo and Ender 3 V3 KE and also better Turkish and Portuguese translations. Uh, but what I find interesting is the new Bamboo Studio update. So with the new version 2.3.0, uh, A-series users can now hook up the AMS, the AMS HT and the AMS 2 Pro units to the printer, which you couldn't do before. Um, so this has been a long time coming. People have mentioned this and uh, Bamboo have wanted to do this for quite some time, uh, but it was delayed, but it is, it is now here. So you can use regular AMS units with the A-series printers. Uh, I like the AMS Lite, but it is a little bit clunky, and of course it is unenclosed, so uh, yeah, I can't really keep it as a dry box. Uh, not that the standard AMS was that good at that either, but because you can use the AMS 2 Pro, uh, this is this is far more interesting. But what you do need is the new AMS hub for the A-series printers. But with this update, you can use multiple AMS units on a A-series printer, which you couldn't do with the AMS Lite. Uh, we actually already got a new <laughs> AMS this morning, and we're just waiting for the hub uh, before we can try this out. Lastly, we have some news regarding Arduino. They have been acquired by Qualcomm. 
So we occasionally use Arduino boards. We have some uh, Unos and Nanos in the workshop down below. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have as, as well. Actually, it was it was possible and, and actually common to use Arduino boards as the microcontroller uh, for 3D printers in the past. Something that's not done that often anymore for obvious reasons. Uh, but Arduino has been a giant in the open source electronics community. And there is concern in the community that that might be the end uh, because of this Qualcomm acquisition. Um, Qualcomm have stated that Arduino will continue with open source developments. And Arduino's most recent release, the Uno Q, which is in collaboration with Qualcomm with their 64-bit um, Dragon Wing MPU, uh, this was released under Creative Commons uh, licensing. Will we continue to see this? I don't know. Time will tell. All right, that about does it for this month. As always, links for all of the stories and products are listed down below in the description. Take a look and let us know what you think. And you can also join us on our Discord server where there is 3D printer talk on a daily basis. We'll be back with another video tomorrow because it's Halloween. So until then, happy printing. Later.